All right, everybody, we are back. We are live. Thank you to all our people listening in, tuning in from all over the world, and to our pianists today. Uh, we have two pianists of us performing, um, two very different pieces as well, all from right, different different centuries. Um, so I want to pass the microphone over now to Mr. Jason. So Jason, when uh, you're ready, would you go ahead and introduce this piece to us? Uh, hi, I'm Jason, and today I'm going to be playing Allegro. And who's it by? Uh, T-P-E. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. All right, go over it. Jason, you know what? I really felt that you caught the essence of this piece. It's like it's a little dance, right? And allegro, what does allegro mean? Any idea? Uh, no, I don't know. All right, Ethan, do you want to help out? Do you have any idea what allegro means? It means just kind of like fast. Almost pretty fast. Yeah, you're pretty you're pretty close. Um, Allegro is more of a character and it means lively. Yeah. So I thought I felt that you did really well in bringing out the liveliness of this here. Your articulation was pretty clear. Um, your rhythm was pretty solid. And um, I felt that you had good fingers working those 16th note runs. All of that was great. So my question now is, if you were to level up, what things would you do more of or what would you like to improve uh probably even more polishing and improvement in like making it more lively uh, allegro yeah so what are some ways that um he could do that uh ethan what are some ways that jason could make the sound even more lively even more allegro i think add like a lot more contrast and try to, I think, smooth out the rhythm a little more. I think the rhythm was pretty, rhythm was pretty solid, except you could like smooth it out a little with like others here and there. Yep, yep, yeah, all of that. I think, I think being more assertive and stronger with these opening lines, yeah, da da dum bum bum, and just giving more act, giving more direction to the lines. Yeah, right. And imagine it, what if it were played by a trumpet? They would be moving toward the D, wouldn't they? And then yeah. even these little runs, we often talk about shape and direction in music. So you can play them two ways. You could either play them straight. That, 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 that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you see how you're naturally creating a little song? Yeah. And then even the staccatos, you want the staccatos to be super crisp of your finger with your fingertip. Bum bum. A C. Right. Nice. Nice. See, already that sounds a lot more lively. Because the fingers are lively, 
and the direction is lively. So that's what I would suggest at this point. Um, just work on the articulation, really bringing it to life. When you have the 16th notes, it's a little bit more shape and direction. Um, and yeah, playing with just a, even a little bit more, how would you say, a little bit more um, control energy. and energy. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, presence, that's another good word as well. Like, what kind of posture? If this piece were a posture, right, the way that we sit, how is this person sitting? Or standing? Let's say this person is standing and this piece of music represents their posture. What do they look like? Are they crouched over the shoulders like this? Or... Uh, kind of like up and re relaxed, I think. Oh, I like that. Yeah, what do you what do you think, Ethan? Do you agree with Jason that if this per like this piece represented how somebody is standing, is this person standing up and but they're relaxed? What would you say? Or are they stiff? Mm, I say they're more like relaxed but still energetic. Yeah, they're standing straight. Hmm. Right. So that's something else that you guys can consider when you're playing a piece of music. Like, what does that look like? How is the person how does the person look are they very casual they kind of slouch back on a seat like this or are they sitting up tall and they're alert and they're aware and see if you can bring that on the sound yeah but so well done so some things to think about are all right there jason excellent all right let's keep on charging forward yeah no thank you ethan thank you for your for your thoughts and review so let's now head no over to you this is a funny piece all right, Ethan, when you're ready, sir, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your piece of music. So I'm Ethan. I'll be playing the Chickadee from Buzz by Seymour Bunstein. Yeah, you know what? You didn't, you didn't even need to say sorry at the end of that. Like we had no idea what was happening. This is the, you gotta watch this video back. This is Ethan's bloopers. Brrr, sorry. Brrr. Oh, so good. <laughs> Jason, what did you think? Oh, uh, very, very fast. And as you say, I we had completely no idea what was going on. Yeah, what's going on there? No, it was really good. I, the, the speed that you picked as well, it was very joyous. And in fact, like it wasn't too fast. You know how sometimes you can play a piece so fast you lose all the detail? I felt that you met, did a very good job at maintaining the detail, but also playing it at speed. So well done. You know, you've really been working on that. What are your thoughts, Ethan, on that performance? Uh, I just got here. Oh, sorry. Oh, Ethan, sorry. Oh, <laughs> Nathan, welcome. <laughs> What are your um, thoughts? Maybe get better at aiming the notes. Well, actually, I thought you did pretty well at aiming the notes. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Did. Right, Jason? Yeah, it, looks, <laughs> it seems like perfectly fine. I, know, I was like, uh, is he missing anything? No. I mean, if he was to... So, Jason, if he was to add anything to the playing to level up, what would you suggest? I'm not sure if this is for this piece, but if you play it like very slightly slower, but then with more like more detail, I guess. Yeah, I think. Do you agree with that, Ethan? Right. So, I mean, detail could be, I mean, he's really, he's such a detailed composer though, eh? It's not just an accent, it's like staccato, then an accent over staccato. And then if you go down, and he's got these little crescendos and decrescendos, pianissimos. Um, any other details? Yeah. I think if anything, you could perhaps bring out the accent a wee bit more, which means that when you get to this note, don't play it so short. Hold it just a wee bit longer so that we can, we can, 
right? The full length of the note. Because if you just jump off the A flat, it's not, not going to sound any different than a staccato. Does that make sense? So you're always thinking when you play articulation in detail, as Jason said, like, what is detail? How can I differentiate between that articulation and that one? What can I do physically? Is it the length of the note? Is it how I strike it? You know, is it like amount different amount of weight in the keys? There's so much science to playing, right? But you really, you're on your way. But yeah, I would suggest though, Ethan, for next time, uh, when you get to this here, even if it's like, <laughs> even if you miss the top note, don't worry about it. <laughs> then just boom, boom. We're all in the moment, right? Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Ethan. Enjoy watching your your very hilarious ending on YouTube. It's now there forever. <laughs> all right, Mr. Nathan, welcome. Lovely to see you. Um, Nathan, does your camera work? Are you able to turn it on? Yes, he's back. All right, we have your piece ready to go. So when you're ready, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your music? Oh, you're on. You're on mute. I have to say the composer too. Yeah, Berg Muller. Okay. Uh, uh, I am Nathan Francis, and I'm playing Progress by Frederick Bergmuller. <laughs> Am I, do, am I doing the fine too? Uh, that's right. You can stop there if you like. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really practice the fine because I. <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay, well, well done. Well done. Um, usually, though, in a piece of music um, like this, you would play through the whole thing. So this is just. Oh, uh, I thought it was like with the repeats. That's why I didn't do the repeat either. Oh no, that, that's fine. Yeah. So even if there is a repeat, you don't need to do it. Um, you can still play the okay. piece as a whole by going through here, and then. This means back to the beginning until the end. And yeah, I was, I, I was, I was thought of do, thinking of doing that, but then I realized that I, I already played to that part. So, like, why would we do in the performance seminars? I thought it was like a repeat. But uh, it's true, yeah. Um, the reason being is that it's in a performance setting, right? So, if you're play, if you're going to play this in a concert, it makes sense to end here because this is the home note because this piece is in the key of C major, right? So it's like ah, now we're at the end. If you stop here on an E, you're leaving us hanging. <laughs> you're like, E, E, and then the E is like, what? Is it going to end? So it sounds like an unfinished sentence. Yeah, so that's that's the main reason, right? But good. Well done on getting through to the end. How was that for you, Nathan? How was that performance? Uh, good, because I've been practicing it for like over a few weeks. 
Yeah, no, I thought it went really well. I think at this point here, well, actually, maybe we'll, we'll ask our audience. Um, Jason, did you have any thoughts on Nathan's performance? Things that you felt that he's he's doing well, and some ideas for him to level up. Uh, uh very smooth, very smooth. Um, you could probably play it slightly faster, and maybe with some more changes to the smoothness, and then it's like more interesting, I guess. Yeah, I think yeah that. I like those points. So you can play around with just slowly building the speed, Nathan. I'm sure you already know that there. Um, but also using a little bit more of the dynamics just to have some contrast. And it also gives it, because a lot of it sounds like scales, right? So putting this crescendo leading from the G all the way to this G here, it makes the music sound a little more exciting. Uh, what about you, Ethan? Do you have any thoughts? I just thought it was good. And like what you both said, I think was what I would agree with and say. Yeah, okay, cool. What about you, Nathan? What are some what are some things that you want to add to this performance to take it to the next level? Uh, yeah, I really, I, I just agree, like playing faster, I think that would make it sound better. I'm gonna use these, I'm playing this again on Friday because of the piano camp performance seminar. Good, nice, excellent. It would not be so fun. No, but this and so and make sure though in that performance seminar you go back to the you yeah, go back yeah, to the, I'm gonna do it I'm obviously doing the fine in the performance seminar. yeah 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 nice so yeah some things that you can think about is listen back to this video and figure out the speed that you're currently playing at then each day yeah that's right then you get to experience Ethan <laughs> Ethan's blooper what you can do is you'll figure out the speed that you're at and then each day just put your metronome up by a by a notch right. Just slowly start, slowly start to build your speed. Um, always looking ahead, always looking ahead, just trying to figure out: Are we moving like? Are we moving in the form of a scale, or are we jumping up and down, right between big leaps? Because those are different characters. So you can have a legato, and this comes back to what Jason was saying before, just to add some more contrast. So there's all legato, and then when you get here to the mezzo forte, really bring out the staccatos so that you can hear these two characters, yeah? And then the same thing here, articulation, slurred to a staccato. Yada, ba -da, ba -da. Notice how my hand moves over these two note slurs. You drop on the first note, the hand, right, on the first note, and then you roll up on the second. So you drop, roll, drop, roll. And you're using the hand to create the sound, right? So you're not using so much the finger, but use the hand. That gesture of the hand is gonna make it sound like a two note slur. But good, Nathan. So I'm happy with how that's sounding. All the best with your performance on Friday. Um, and then do watch this back and figure out what other steps you need to, to move to the next level, right? All right, gentlemen. Very good. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Enjoy watching the video. You guys have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you guys again at the next performance seminar, all right? Nathan, Ethan, Jason, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you later on, Ethan. That was pretty good, right?